Hey, it's JC1424 once again with NASCAR Heat 3. And in this episode of our season with Stuart Friesen's number 52 Hallmark Chevrolet, we're going to be completing race 13, which is the Buckle Up in Your Truck 225 Click It or Ticket Kentucky Office of Highway Safety at Kentucky Speedway. That is the race name. It's the race name. It says it's the race name. There is the race name. Last episode was race 12. We went to Chicagoland for the Camping World 225, where we got our fifth win of the season, our second time going back-to-back -back in the season as well. And that was actually pretty easy, aside from the fact that, uh, what's his name? Uh, Christian Uki Dookies, whatever, whatever the hell you want to call him, he ran me into the wall because he was trying to work with me or, you know, whatever you'd call that crap. And then we've got the standings right here. We are seven points ahead of Brett Moffitt, so he must have been doing really well because he outdid us maybe like stage points or something. Because we won, we got the most points possible in that sense, but now he's right behind us. I don't know the odds of him passing us, Kentucky. I don't know how we're actually going to do. If he starts in front of us in the first stage by a good bit, then he might get more points than us there. Um, maybe we'll be moving our way through the field with tire wear and stuff like that. Who knows? Uh, Ross Chastain's no longer in second place, but he, he's also just like eight points behind Brett Moffitt which is, I think, like 15 points behind us. I think that's accurate. But uh, let's get out of here and head to the track. Y'all remember how in NASCAR Heat 2, the apron was temporarily above the white line? And it didn't get fixed until an update? Well, in this game, and I don't know if they plan to fix this at all, the yellow line is it's just wherever the hell it wants to be in the front stretch. I mean, it's fine everywhere else, but... After the start-finish line to turn one, it just kind of goes wherever. And you'll notice when the AI, when it start, you start off the race, they drive down onto the apron and they just go wherever. And oh my goodness, this truck is this truck is tight. And that ruined my qualifying lap. I'm going through the grass and I'm going to start like shit because this truck just can't even turn. That's that's not what I wanted. 19th? I don't want to start 19th. I, mean, I could probably start in the top 10 if that hadn't happened. And I was just talking about the track, and the track didn't like me, so it threw me in the wall because it's a little bitch. Like, well, I guess I'm the little bitch now. Um, where's Ben, ben Rhodes? Uh, Matt Crafton, uh, Brett Moffat, that's what your name is. I don't fucking know all these damn truck series drivers, and I can't tell one from the other. This game's got me pissed off to the point where my brain doesn't work. It's all mush. Um, Ross Chastain, sixth. Well, Matt Crafton's actually starting second, so that's cool to see. Grandfinger usually starts the best out of the drivers on that team. Where's, um, Myatt Snyder? He usually starts, like, all the way in the back. 31st. Well, sometimes it's all the way in the back, and sometimes it's all the way in the front. It's This game is just all over the place on these drivers. And Allie Decker starting 27th. Um, okay, we're still 19th, so no one in front of us got sent to the back. I mean, maybe two of them could, because that's unique, and that happens every now and then. But, nope, it's going to be 19th. I got it on a looser setup, because I thought it would be tight at this track. It's, you know, flat and all that. But, no, this truck still pretty terrible at turning. I mean, the truck series, the Xfinity series, and the cup series is just uh, a lack of downforce. You really get something in the trucks, but even then, like, still, like, they're so low to the ground. I think it would look weird if the trucks were actually as high off the ground as the cars were back in 2005 and 2004 or whatever. But, green flag is out, and we are underway for the first stage, probably like four laps, three laps. I don't know. Yep, where's the L line going? Where is it going? Like, we got trucks below it and trucks above it because it's just wherever the hell it wants to be. Okay, now, now it's kind of placed properly. I'm trying to hold these guys back off behind me. Okay, so the first stage is three laps. That is very difficult to read. They should uh, revise how these overlays are colored and everything because then it actually be, I actually be able to see how many laps we have properly, not have to squint at it and all kinds of crap. I, I got glasses. My glasses are an accurate prescription, and then this freaking lap counter thing is just messing everything up. That That is so disorienting, though. The freaking yellow line is just... It just jumps out the middle lane. Okay, I'm crashing into Clay Greenfield because I feel like I should not have to have the gas in, but for whatever reason, this truck is just tight as hell at this damn track. I gain a position, and then I lose a position. So I don't even think we're going to be able to get some stage points here, so that sucks. Matt Crafton is going to have a field day with me. He's probably going to have the points lead for sure after this race. I'm trying. The driver's trying to use all the other lanes, even though that outside lane at Kentucky is not really a thing at all. Getting a run in the front stretch. I keep on using it. Here we come. So we've got Ben Rhodes and with Johnny Sauter in the 13. I think that's who drives the 13. I don't know. We've got both those guys running next to each other. Same damn paint scheme. 
what sucks is that that October DLC came out and it unfortunately did not contain the, the alternate paint scheme that I've been wanting for Stuart Fried with the, all the puzzle pieces, the Autism Speaks paint scheme. I don't know why. Like, what's the problem? Why can we have the paint scheme? Why is this truck so terrible at turning? Do I need to drop the wedge, like, immensely? Like, what are we going to have to do? Uh, well, I wasn't going to get to ninth. I was in 10th, so I fell back to 11th. And at least Todd Gillen didn't pass. So we're going to be on the inside the next restart. Uh, right front tires at 61%, so I think they really did update something and change that the possibilities of the right front ever blowing at the end of a run, because it's not really coming nearly as close as it used to. I, I have to like look into the details of all the updates. Maybe people actually do know if they've looked into it. Harrison Burton started on the pole, and then he won the first stage. Uh, Brett Moffitt still finished third place, so he's, he's staying up there. And plus, he's on the inside. He might be able to actually win the next stage. Uh, okay, well, it just got a lot darker. It was actually a lot more sunset, lighter in the day than usual, which is cool because whenever they do start NASCAR races at nighttime, they aren't at nighttime. They're uh, almost sunset, so that was a lot closer to it. I just really wish they'd get the whole gradual thing down. I'm betting on it for NASCAR Heat 5. There ain't no way they're going to be able to add a gradual transition into this game before we get to the next NASCAR game. Uh, another good restart like usual. Uh, more worn tires this time, and maybe once their tires wear down, we'll find ourselves actually being able to make up even more ground than we have in the first stage. Uh, just have to use the trucks around me to make through the corners perfectly because it's just that freaking tight. Um, it's not like Iowa. It's not as bad as Iowa, where we were we just had a terrible truck until the tires were worn in general. Like, the truck was better on worn tires. It's not like that. I'm trying to pass Dylan Lupton, but he's taking up the bottom lane. And I, I don't know what, what this programming is right now, where I'm I'm just staying on throttle and I'm turning and then they launch forward and I, I didn't even do anything. It's, it's confusing. Okay, Todd Gillen got past us. Staying his draft off the corner. I'm going to go high. I was thinking of going high and taking the run up there, but now I'm not really getting one, I guess. Let's see if I can try like the middle lane. I remember the middle lane was strong at Kentucky in NASCAR Heat 3, which was kind of odd because you wouldn't expect that, would you? And then there's Brett Moffat on the outside. Todd Gillen got by on the inside. I'm working on it. When these tires are wearing down, I'm starting to actually get loose in the middle and beginning. It's just everywhere in the freaking corner right now. Focusing. Oh my god, why are y'all going so slow? I, I don't think that was necessary. Gosh, it, it wants to kick out sideways and spin so badly. I'm waiting for their damn tires to wear off. We're getting stage points, but yeah, I think Brett Moffitt at the end of this stage is actually going to have the uh, points. I don't know if he got it last time. This, in the end, I think he got eight stage points. I didn't get any. So yeah, he's actually already got the, the point lead for me, and he's going to gain more on it after this one. Unless I can possibly pass him back right here. There we go. Slip it underneath him. I'm running into him. I'm going to get this from you. I'm going to get this. I don't care if I lose the position to somebody else. We beaten him? Okay, so we got one more point on right here. We're actually tied for the points lead right now. Because I got seven, and yeah, I, like I, I got seven points, and then he got six points. And then the last stage, he got eight. So it's like that we should be equal right now, right? I, I'm guessing if he just gained seven points on me in total right now. Okay, so yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That right front tire is down to only 23%. That's a 1.5 mile track, so things just completely changed for the, the wear settings. I haven't changed anything. I'm still on the same stuff that we are already on. Okay, so we're going to repair our damage, get our four tires, and enough fuel to make it to the end of the next stage. Where are we going to be? I lost a position to Brett Moffitt, so now Brett Moffitt's on the outside. So, I mean, good for you, but not really. Okay, so let's see how good of a restart we can have. I didn't change my setup, which is probably going to increase the chance of me actually being able to do something on this restart, but I'm going to try to see if me getting used to how this truck drives in general can actually help us out here. Okay, sending it underneath Harrison Burton. This truck is wobbling all over the damn place with this restart, trying to go between the apron and then the banking. But we're in the lead. See how long I can hold on to it. Probably not very much at all because, you know, how much better they are than us on fresh tires what I've seen so far. And a caution happens as I'm starting to overdrive turn three, by the way. I can tell that it was. 
I was blocking, holding him off, and if I wasn't trying to block, I'd probably have fallen in second or third place. But uh, Brett Moffitt's in fifth place. He's not having the best of final stages. So, yeah, I think we're actually keeping this points lead on Brett Moffitt, which is kind of surprising. Don't know what that caution was for. Maybe we have a replay. Maybe not. Get out of here. And, see, this time we're on more worn tires, but we have good restarts. I don't know if the fact that their tires are getting worn might play a factor or not. But it is a green-white checker, because we're on lap 21, and then after this we have lap 22. Okay, let's hope that these tires don't wear me down too much, because otherwise it would suck if that caution turned out to be the reason why I couldn't win this race. We got one lap to go, and Harrison Burton coming up behind me, and he's getting underneath me, and... Dang it. Um, let me use some of that draft. I'm, I'm going to pull you back to work. There's Brent Moffitt. Well, you're not passing me. You're not passing me. Okay, letting off. <sighs> yes, the, the caution was the reason why I couldn't win this race. I, I don't know if Harrison Burton or anybody would have gotten around me if that caution had come out. Because, of course, you know, your tires wear a little bit more before theirs do. I can't really be that upset because I just won the past two races. But I am frustrated to see speed rating of 99. Harrison Burton was two wins behind us before we did this race, but he just got his fourth of the season, and now he's just one behind us. Brett Moffitt finishes in third, so he gained seven points in the first two stages, so he should be like one point behind us if he just finished right behind us in this race. Tyler Ankrum got another good finish. Sometimes I see him up here, and sometimes I don't. I don't know what he's doing. Like Some drivers, they're good every race, and some drivers are good in some races. It's just, it's just a big old freaking mess. And Tyler Ankrum, it's like, I don't know, 40-60 ratio or some kind of crap. Tyler Dipple, fifth. Um, Matt Kraft finished 14th. Didn't he start all the way up there in the front? And now, I don't know how he wound up back here. Ben Rose is running pretty well at the beginning. Ross Chastain did not get a good run at all. Finishes 11th place. He needs to be getting them top fives. He still won a race, so there's always that. Um, Myatt Snyder finishes 23rd. So, I mean, that's okay, given what, what he usually does and where he usually starts. Ali Decker finishes 30th. Well, my math was correct. We're just one point in front of Brett Moffitt, and we're now 29 points in front of Ross Chastain after that race. Austin Hill is in fourth. I haven't been paying attention to him at all. He got a playoff point, so I guess he won a stage, and I think I remember that happening. I don't know where it was, but he is four points in front of Harrison Burton. So I see drivers like Brett Moffitt, Ross Chastain, and Harrison Burton. I always pay attention to Matt Crafton and Grant Enfinger. And then there's Tyler Ingram. But then there's Austin Hill. I don't pay any attention to him, and yet he hasn't won anything or whatever, and he's just there in fourth place. So, is he making the uh, the playoff standings? Where is Austin Hill? He's in seventh. I think it's the top eight. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just the top eight because I can't scroll down right now. Hmm. And then Matt Crafton is barely hanging on in there. Or maybe he is, maybe he isn't because, I mean, there's Jordan Hand Anderson is taking up room. That's the stupid part because... It would suck if Jordan Anderson was the reason why Matt Crafton couldn't make it to the playoffs. It would be nice if Matt Crafton would win something. But I don't know if that's going to happen in the next race or or win. Eldora's coming up next weekend. But next up, uh, tomorrow we're going to Pocono for the Gander RV150. I love me some Pocono. And this is going to be our first time raising this track in this game on the channel. Race 14. Uh, well, we went back-to-back -back and we almost got our, our third win in a row. Uh, I don't know the odds of us winning here. Hopefully this track is still pretty damn challenging. See you next time. That's that, and episode over.